Hello and welcome to a World Cancer Day special edition of Society TV. I'm Andy Huff. Your support of the American Cancer Society is one reason for the massive progress made against cancer in the United States. Unfortunately, people living in low and middle income countries have not benefited from these advancements. On February 4th, World Cancer Day, the American Cancer Society joined forces with other cancer advocates to discuss ways of implementing proven strategies that prevent cancer and to ease suffering to those around the world. This year alone, 14.1 million people will be diagnosed with cancer. 8.2 million people will die. Sally Cole, Senior Vice President of Global Health, participated in the World Cancer Day Roundtable hosted by the Center for Strategic and International Studies. And we want to extend what we do in the United States to vulnerable communities abroad. We know how to save lives and we know what works. So we just have to apply what we already know. Following the webcast, Cole and our Chief Medical Officer, Dr. Otis Brawley, took questions about the global cancer fight during a live webcast and Twitter chat. Dr. Brawley said there are several key factors in the global effort. Really, we need to look at healthy living, try to prevent as many cancers as possible through diet and exercise, proper diet and exercise. We need to focus on early detection. We need to not overemphasize it, but give it its proper emphasis. We need to remember that around the world, treatment is highly variable. There are a lot of places, even in the United States actually, where people do not get adequate treatment. And we need to focus on quality of life of the cancer patient. Barrett Goodman, director of cancer, the emperor of all maladies, joined the chat and gave this preview of the six hour documentary, which will air on PBS March 30th through April 1st. I went to medical school from 48 to 52, and we were told you don't tell patients that they have cancer because it's inhuman. It would be cruel to do so. I remember one child, girl, I remember she, she looked at me, I'm dying, I'm dying. Can't you save me, Dr. Pinkle? Can't you save me? I'm not a scientist. I don't know whether this will all pan out, but there's a sense, a kind of palpable energy and excitement that we may be on the cusp of some significant changes, some significant breakthroughs, some new and radical therapies and treatments that will change our relationship to the disease. Make no mistake, this is one of the most significant human challenges in our history. Dr. William Nelson from the American Association of Cancer Research also joined the chat. One participant asked him why all the buzz around immunotherapy. Well, cancer immunotherapy has become very exciting. We've known for a long time that the immune system can recognize a cancer cell as different from a normal cell and could potentially kill it. What's been problematic is that obviously it hasn't done so if the cancer is growing in your body. So taking the brakes off the immune system, there appears to be several treatments recently approved by the Food and Drug Administration that do this, unleash the immune system, it goes and destroys the cancer, and there's a lot of upside to this uh, kind of approach. And if you'd like to know what you can do, check the Society's guidelines at cancer.org and schedule your cancer screening. We'll leave you now with photos of New York City's Empire State Building on the eve of World Cancer Day. It was lit in blue and orange, the colors of the Union for International Cancer Control, which organizes World Cancer Day. Thanks for joining us. Have a great day. Society TV is a production of your American Cancer Society and may not be reproduced or rebroadcast without expressed written permission.